I'd like to start by saying thank you to uh, the organizers of this program over the years. Um, I think I joined um, since 20, 2020, you know, and then since then I can't imagine myself not being a part of this. So thank you, and I hope you keep it going. All right. Um, so our topic, um, rhetoric of empire, you know, um, semantic network and colonial legacy in user reviews of theme hotels. So I would like to quickly talk about um, how we came to um, do this. First of all, um, we are basically a group of people from the Network for Digital Humanities in Africa uh, that was formed in um, the Netherlands. Uh, but more than that, we also belong to the Digital Humanities uh, uh, in Association in Nigeria. Right, so um, Tunde Okpere Davis is um, maybe the top guy in DH in Nigeria, you know. So um, it's more than like co coordinating our activities. And this is a, a group of people who really didn't agree on nearly everything, <laughs> you know, that formed this. So it's okay for you to disagree with us because some of us did not agree on some of these things. So, so. All right, so the idea of the theme hotel is um, about Las Vegas. And then you wonder, these guys are African. Why are they talking about Las Vegas, you know? Of course, uh, Las Vegas is um, a place that you know for the iconic buildings, buildings right? Uh, with different hotels that are uh, modeled after many histories. One of such history is the Luxor Hotel. Actually, that was the attraction for me, all right? But in the process, we wanted to look at how these hotels really tell the story that they were meant to tell or did not say based on users' reviews, you know? And that is basically the background. So um, the guy, one, um, one of us is from Canada, and the other guy here is is also studying in the United States. So nearly every one of us, we, are we, are, we have interest in the Northern America. So we are all here. So that justifies you know, why we're going into this first. Uh, the guy from Canada, Frank, um, will take us through the introduction. Over to you. All right, thank you so much, James. Um, and thank you, everyone. I'm so happy I'm able to join us online for this amazing um, conference. So James, can you go to um, the next slide, please? Wait, how do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> can you go to the next slide? Yeah, yeah I want us, wanted to show your face first. OK. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, so. So I'll begin from here. So basically, um, we'll be dealing with some colonial narrative in digital um, discourse. And in, in this aspect, we're going to focus on three. I'll just run us through these three major things here. So we have what we call the iconic establishments, which James has um, made a reference to. And these three iconic establishments are one of the three um, most popular um, hotels in Las Vegas, Luxor, Venetian, and Pari, of course. And, and so the scope of our analysis, we use about 24,000 user reviews, which were all scraped from TripAdvisor for this particular research. And then of course, we had to use interdisciplinary approach as people from um, DH to, to be able to get some insight on what is happening within those reviews in line with what our research um, question and intents are. So, so basically, we have three major objectives. And um, the first one is we want to see the diverse cultural imprints that are in those in those reviews, right? How do they reflect kind of a range of cultural imprints and historical colonial resonances that are in those reviews from each of those three hotels, right? We're also interested in looking at the seeing if there are certain subtle and um, potent ways that um, colonial legacies or colonial narratives or colonial um, 
um, these causes are being perpetuated within those conversations, right? And then looking at all those um, themes and all those coded um, tab that already created, we're also trying to create some semantic networks to see how you know the predominant language themes that are used in those in those narratives as, as a whole. So I, I'm handing over to Sunday now to go ahead. Thank now you, come back Frank. So we try to situate this uh, study and the body of knowledge to see what others have, I mean, scholars have said. Then we see how we can contribute to the discussion. So we have uh, scholars like uh, Pamudu that talks about uh, the diversity of uh, debris in Colombo. And for that, he was trying to examine how the elements of uh, colonial, uh, sorry, colonial dwellings in Colombo are solidified and erased based on uh, when uh, he's trying to look at uh, the boutique of hotel, in, uh, how is it restructured? So for that story, they are trying to show the, I mean, the history of uh, Colombo hotels in Colombo and uh, the piece that uh, are doing the renewal processes that was going on at, at that moment. So uh, the study was like giving us ideas of how the renewal process of these dwellings uh, negotiates their colonial past. Then we also have studies like uh, uh, Lin that was looking at the key design characteristics of some shaped uh, hotels or lobbies from uh, four distinct hotels in Las Vegas. Uh, we have the Venetian Las Vegas, uh, the Bellagio, Paris Las Vegas, and some others. So they are, I mean, the submission of that study was that some of these design concepts, which many of them are rooted in classical uh, antiquity, and they derive their uh, structures from those uh, colonial history. Then we also have, uh, Sorry, we have uh, Joseph, Chair Joseph, and others that examine the extent to which the use of colonial heritage for tourism revives or aggravates precarious uh, ethnic landscapes. So the argument was that for a rest restoration of colonial heritage uh, for tourism, we need to look at where the history came from. So, and some others, I think. Okay. All right. Um, so. Um, Basically, we look at rhetoric as a medium of, um, for historical and power dynamics. Um, and that forms our rationale for the study. So we consider language, especially in review two, uh, to be uh, capable of carrying uh, echoes of historical and cultural narratives, you know, based on their use of words, the phrases, or the tone used by some of the reviewers. You know. uh, for example, uh, if somebody uses an expression that um, um, reference um, exo exorcism, you know, um, or luxury, or it talks about the historical laws, you know, uh, we want to see, well, okay, is it talking about um, some form of colonial narratives, consciously or subconsciously, you know? And then we consider that to be very significant because of the ongoing contemporary discourse, and then uh, and we re agree that uh, um, reviews such as hotel reviews have the capacity of um, showing power dynamics. Uh, if you, even generally, if, if you use a, a restaurant, for example, or you use an airline service, and then you're talking about the service of the person that you met, at some point, you know, and then you, if your focus move away from the actual service, and then you then focus on certain things, you might then begin to ask, why are you saying that? For example, you buy something from, say, Amazon, for example, and then um, you are supposed to put out a review on online, and you're talking about the postman who came to deliver. Um, the, the product to you. You're talking about how, how not challenge, how is Aldi and all that, you know? So can we, can we really put that, those things together and say you're actually doing a review about um, the product you have actually bought, you know? So, but whether we find that or not is another kettle of fish, you know? So, so we are trying to look at how uh, rhetoric as a medium uh, is used to perpetuate or challenge uh, colonial legacies, like we talked about. So for uh, user reviews, we look at the 
power dynamics and the understanding of how colonial ideologies uh, romanticize history and culture. So we want to look at some of these things and how rhetoric or language is used to uh, give us ideas of what uh, links the past with the present. OK, Canada. <laughs> OK, so, so can I go to the next slide? OK. Yeah, so I'll just work us very briefly on uh, some of our methodological approaches. So first, we implemented um, a computational textual analysis um, approach. Uh, and this allows us to kind of delve very deep into the language um, using this reviews. And we're able to identify some language patterns, some words associations, and then see how those words occurred across those different hotels looking at the Kolo case and all those kinds of things, just to understand how, you know, those digital conversations we are happening and the kind of meanings that we're actually revealing those um, conversations. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, our data comprises over 24, no, 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 can you go back? Yes, thank you. <laughs> our data comprises about over 24,000 um, user reviews that we are scraped from trip advisors. And um, this selection was very strategic, of course, because um, TripAdvisor is very reputable for, you know, people dropping their comments about those big hotels. So there are other um, kind of sites where those reviews could be gotten as well, but they, the number of reviews gotten from those sites are nothing compared to what we have on TripAdvisor. So many people use TripAdvisor to actually show either their contentment or discontentment with whatever service they receive from either of these hotels. And then, of course, um, lastly, our analysis, um, sorry, the last one, <laughs> our analysis kind of pivoted around the concept of um, narrative fabric, which is kind of an analytical lens through which we examine those user reviews and identify how the rhetoric of empire is somehow interwoven into the fabric of digital um, communication, right? So, yes, thank you. Um, so now, um, we these are some of the, um, the three major digital research tools were applied for this particular study. So we began with um, WebHavy, and um, WebHavy is a very powerful web scraping tool, which we use to um, scrape the data from, from TripAdvisor um, to get the, the data we want from TripAdvisor. And then we also use, um, sorry, um, can you go back a bit, James, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, we also use um, Python, of course, which is a very versatile programming language that has quite a lot of uh, libraries that allows for all kinds of manipulation, data manipulation. So we use Python both for data cleaning and doing all kinds of things. And some of the data visualization gems is going to be showing us later about um, networks we are created with um, Python as well. And then, of course, we use NVivo for the coding for the coding and also getting some um, qualitative insight from the data. So if you allow us to do some very um, important coding for the data and getting some qualitative insight, why Python was used predominantly for data cleaning and then for the visualization. So James. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, bridging, bridging the, the past from and, and the present is one of those things we wanna look at. We wanna look at the power of language influence of rhetoric and digital age reality. However, as you see, some of these things that we vehemently disagree among ourselves were later removed, you know, because if we cannot agree on certain things, we are not going to bring it to the public, you know, so that we don't get into too much interrogation among the audience. All right, so the theoretical framework just to um, Make sure that we don't spend so much time and get us bored. Um, we use Kenneth Box dramatism and then I breathed it theory from uh, Omi Baha, um, which looks at how cultural um, identities from different angles becomes one and it becomes something new, you know. And then we also use again that sense theory. Here we are looking at our reviews from um, um, users can influence how you might dispose, you might be disposed to whether you use a certain uh, product or service 
especially in relation to hotel in this situation. All right. But uh, for Kennebuck, we were looking at how um, some of these narratives are characterized, are dramatized, you know, in terms of art scenes and, and others. You know, like it is one thing that we see when you are on stage, like we are here, it is another thing that you are when you are not there. So when reviewers put out their reviews out there, um, they seem to be acting out certain narratives, you know, and then so that's just the, um, the, the connection between our data and then um, some of this theoretical framework. So now we want to quickly dive into the analysis, you know. First, like uh, Frank mentioned, we want to look at the potential Egyptian theme and historical resonances in Luxor. Of course, how many of us have been to Vegas? Okay, have you visited Luxor? Uh, okay, so you see the Sphinx, uh, the, what's it called, the Egypt Pyramid. So the hotel is built like the Egypt Pyramid, as you see some of the pictures that we, 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 we put here. The Venetian Hotel, it's modeled after Venice in Italy, you know, and then Paris, Las Vegas, as um, the Eiffel Tower, you know, and then some other things that you can really relate with when you go to Paris, you know. So I, I want to go back on this because um, uh, that has been explained. Then um, for the theme hotels, we want to look at whether we can find some cultural imprints and historical resonances like we mentioned before. I want to see whether some of the reviews uh, uh, have mentions of uh, yeah, Venice or colonial history or Paris as it, as it were. All right, so now, I don't know if you can see the network clearly. Okay, but based on the, the list that we have there, so you can see the use of great location being the most prominent use, and these are not so surprising because you want to say you can, and it, this does not mean that uh, these are positively expressed, you know. Uh, it's not such a great hotel, or it's a great hotel, you know, and that's one of the limitations, except we are now dealing with some of these things based on the different collocations, you know. So, and it's nearly impossible to bring 24,000 uh, data set here, and then we want to see how they collocate. All right, so, so we see all sort of things like this. Now, we have... Venetian, and I, I, I gave, we gave some of the examples. For example, we have the Venetia is always the one we come back to. And you can see the emphasis. Venetia is always the one we come back to. Emphasis on Venetia, emphasis on always, and the uniqueness. What happens to others? All right? Even those without the history or without, that are not seen, you know, so do, does that say anything? Now, what other things is this reviewer talking about? It's, it's talking about the suits being great. It's talking about the location where you found the amenity. And the restaurants are wonderful. Now, another reviewer said this. I experienced the real amazing feel of Venice. And that, this is exactly how it's put. All right. Then somebody says, we are proudly Venetian now. Right. <laughs> you know, so uh, some, if, just like you love, when we found this, we are trying to argue that is it possible that some of these reviewers are paid to say this? Right? We, wouldn't, we cannot ascertain that. But based on what we are looking at for, this seems to be pushing out certain narrative. Whether you are paid to do it or you are doing it, on your own room, free will. You know, it's pushing out some narrative. So let's get to Luxor and see some of the um, prominent words and the narrative used. Now, for Luxor, we're not surprised that for a hotel review, you see hotel, you see Luxor, you see gray, whether it's positively used or, or not negatively used. And then you see, we see that the word experience is uniquely used more than others. All right? It doesn't mean it's the most prominent, but the unique nature, like we'll see in the way, even when it's the word is not directly used. Look at this. Room 
very dusty. After wiping the room down, our overall stay was amazing with family and friends. Thank you to the Luxor staff. The wedding guests are the blast. See you all next. All right. Another review. Still one of the best property in Vegas. From the staff, hotel cleanliness, food, and bar selection, you name it. And the rooms are not too expensive. Give Luxor a try. This is a free advert that, we, that you can see on some of the reviews. It doesn't mean they are the best or the worst. But if you compare this to the previous one, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but it's okay if I do, because some of the slides will really explain this. You know, if you compare this to some of the things, so the other one that we, we, we saw, the, the first one, the Venetian, you see that there is no emphasis on the, this, this structure, the theme, but emphasis is now focused on the service received, all right? Is it good? Is it bad? We are not to say that, but this is what is common to most of the reviews that we found in relation to Luxor Hotel. Then let's get to Paris. Um, okay. I think I'm going to get to Paris after this slide. I don't know. Okay, so we, we see some network of words that we'll explain in the next slide. Yeah. So this is a Venn diagram that Python gave us, and then we the explanation from one of the most experienced researchers among us is that words like great and stay that appear in this review, all of them together, suggest that Generally, people who use this had great experiences. For example, those in Luxor who describe their stay as being great, uh, um, and those in Paris who also did the same thing, they are saying it differently. Great in Luxor is about the stay, but great in Venice or Venetian is about the amenities. If you look at, by, by what we found in Las Vegas, we also saw, saw an example, I, I don't know what's happened to that slide, you know, there is an example of Las Vegas, which was talking, that maybe I'll see together, which is talking about um, the real Paris, you know? So I, I'm, I'm sure we, we have it somewhere. Okay, it's, it's in the last, in the next slide, you know? So now let's take them one by one, you know? We see the use of great or stay here used differently. Now, for Luxor, we see the word casino, which is part of the services, the hotel render, and which is what we find generally in, in Vegas. All right? Um, we see that in, uh, in Luxor. Then we see um, the experience, like I said, and then the gambling aspect, you know. It looks so there is this emphasis on the service, like I mentioned earlier. Then for Paris, we see the location and Paris. And the example I was thinking about, that I was talking about, is here now. We say the Paris-Las Vegas location offers a unique experience resembling, resembling a walk through Paris. All right. <laughs> but nobody was talking about the Egypt pyramid or the Sphinx, you know. And then, incidentally, um, we, just, we, we just decided to make sure that we measure the same number of data because Luxor happens to be the most reviewed hotels on TripAdvisor, whereas the other ones, they have about 37,000, but we decided to take the same number, you know, for us to see. Perhaps if we have taken then based on what they have, maybe the narrative will have changed, you know. So, but let's go to Venetian now. We see what's like beautiful, resort, and fantastic, you know. And then, we see, example, the Venetian resort is beautiful and provides a fantastic experience of Venice, making reference to the reality of history. This was exact quote from one of the reviews, right? And if you compare this with Paris, is it a coincidence? I don't know. But it says something about colonial narrative, you know? But some of us, even in the group, did not agree. Just say, okay, okay. it's just one of the samples, you know? Now, and then 
when we look at both together, we see that the reference to Pari and Venetian, you know, appeal in luxury or thematic experience instead of the service that we see when we make, when references are made to um, Luxor, right? And then, like the in-house service, such as gambling, that uh, is frequently mentioned in some of the reviews. So we did a comparison of aesthetic and location uh, uh, analysis of those keywords. And we see that, okay, all of them, they share similarities. For example, um, all of them mention Luxor, all right. Um, but they also mentioned um, the beauty, great service, uh, great rooms, and all those. But Paris as the most prominent mention, you know, and it is not the most revealed, you know, in terms of um, our data set. All right. So now we then decide to look at the, the um, negotiation of colonial legacy in hotel reviews. We did not agree based on what we found from um, our analysis through Python because we saw that there are no direct references, you know, made to colonial legacy. Well, perhaps they were just mentioning their direct experiences with the buildings and all that. So we came out null in this. Then we, we then um, look at um, the perpetuation of colonial ideologies of capitalism in the way they use it. And where the, the output is that they are almost at the same level, all right, because they are all pushing their surveys to say, okay, we're the best. And this is not even based on the reviews. They are based on the website description or the hotel description, as you see on TripAdvisor or the website themselves. So um, they, 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 want to, they all want to do business, you know, all right. So the next slide, um, which shows uh, the rating, shows that, well, people are positively disposed to the service of Venetian Hotel uh, in comparison to others. And this is, this is subjective in all sense, because um, I, I, I've been part of a, a research that involves Japanese uh, group, all right, and how they do online reviews. And then based on the argument, it does not mean that when a Japanese um, wants to say something is of extreme quality, a Japanese will likely not give you five star. But an American will likely give you five star rating. You know, a Nigerian will likely give you four, <laughs> all right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because you can never do it all. You know, so rating may not be the actual reflection of the quality of service, but this is what we found. Um, then for sentiment analysis, in terms of the um, occurrence of keywords in, uh, in, uh, in relation to perpetuation of um, uh, colonial ideologies, we, we see um, a lot of mentions like that we could also not agree on, you know, um, and because of that, we are not, we are not bringing emphasis to them and say, okay, this is it, this is that. But based on the use of great, uh, the use of positive expressions, like we had a great time in terms of colloquy. But then, if you don't lemmatize or you don't uh, use stop words, you know, for your collocation, you may not still get the right kind of output that you want to get. If I say, I'm not, I don't like you, or I am, I am not unliking you, you know, and you want to look at that kind of expression, it will likely not give you the same sentiment in terms of what you get when you bring out your data. So, um, um, we are getting close to rounding up, you know. So, if you look at this, uh, the regular topicalization that we found in some of these stuff, we put title to them based on the, our express, uh, expression of colonial legacy or not. So we found that, we said that, we, uh, we said that, 
the frequent mention of room and hotel shows uh, an attention on the physical aspect and amenities of uh, the Luxor, all right? But it's regular, it's nothing extraordinary, you know? And then, uh, but it may also be tied to the hotel representation of Egypt. It's open to interpretation. But when we then look at the negation, like the use of not and where, you know, it it's also suggests a mix of experiences, you know, and showing that, okay, people's experience may not less necessarily be what we interpret it to be. So, but one thing that we agreed on is that the language used in relation to Luxor Hotel um, shows that there is so much emphasis on the services and the facility rather than the architectural design or the history of Egypt or the Sphinx or the pyramid as we may know it to be. All right, so for Venetian, we, we seem to agree that there is a romanticization of the European culture and luxury subject to um, disagreement, you know, because the, there is a predominantly, uh, predominantly, uh, predominant use of the word beautiful, amazing, best, you know, and this has suggestion about the um, strong appreciation for the aesthetic appeal of that hotel, you know, that is designed to emulate Italy, you know. And then you see a lot of mention for Venetian, Venice, you know. If you say Venetian hotel, it's okay, but when you go directly and mention Venice, <laughs> Venice say something. And then in all the reviews, the 57,000 reviews, we didn't put that out here. We only used about 8,000 plus. In the 57,000 review, there was not a single mention of the word Egypt, you know? So, whereas we see Paris, maybe because Paris and Venice, we, we, can, we, can, we can excuse Paris, you know? But Venice itself, it, at least it has about 10, 15 mentions, you know? So, we may then say, yeah, there is something uh, there, are some, there are some references to the actual thing. Though, of course, these are simulacras, you know, they are simulation of the real thing. But there is that awareness in the minds of the, the visitors, you know, to those hotels. Now, let's look at the actual thing that inspired our topic, that the rhetoric of empire, and then the role in perpetuating colonial legacy. So we agree that language can be used to reflect a fascination you know, especially in relation to the use of the Paris team, you know, um, and it may suggest some form of cultural dominance, all right? Um, and then when we also consider even that mention of Venice, it might also suggest something of romanticization of either Paris or even Venice itself. And we see the use of many positive adjectives in relation to Paris theme, you know, to, em to emphasize um, maybe an idealized Western culture or, or something that, well, maybe out of sentiment, you can say that it's re echoing um, colonial era sentiment of cultural superiority, uh, superiority. But does that mean every um, every visitor say that, no, you know. So personally, this is, you might see me talking so much passionately about this because this is actually, for me, my PhD dissertation, the part of my PhD dissertation. And I'm actually going to pay uh, some visits, you know, to Vegas to interview real people and see whether this resonates, you know. Maybe you will not recognize me if, you, if I happen to meet you during that time, <laughs> right? So um, um, I, I don't want to continue to react to some of these things we have said. So let's just conclude. So in conclusion, we, we agree that language use in, uh, in the review of hotels um, is significant. We cannot just say they are just used like that. Um, whether the users are conscious or not, uh, the users are paid to do it, or not paid, or they are just expressing themselves. It's an expression of something in there, you know. All right, so to our analysis, we feel that um, reviews can really showcase some ideologies, which 
either contest or promote or perpetrate um, contemporary um, cultural nuances or ideology or whatever it is, but it's also a part of something to look at for in digital discourse. However, given our limited data, we, want to, we are not making a conclusion that, that this is actually what it is. Maybe in my personal research, maybe I'm going to come up with that conclusion and I say, disprove me by going to Vegas and say, it is not. All right. So, so finally, our study highlights the ongoing impact of language in shaping and reflecting societal narrative and then um, inherent power relation between users and structures that we may find um, in places. It could be products. It could be anything, you know. So, but the basic thing is that reviews from our perspectives are not just taken as just an expression. It says something. It's, it wants something. And we, we are bringing attention that maybe we need to engage it the more. And on this note, I want to thank you for your attention. All right. <laughs>